Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to Ahl Bayt. Live with me, Rebecca Masterton and Brother Ali Rahim. And we're talking about the nature of the human mind uh, according to Islamic teachings and how that compares with contemporary definitions of the human mind and how we are to understand uh, consciousness and belief uh, and, and God uh, within a contemporary context, uh, looking, looking at these two uh, ways of viewing the mind and psychology as well. So we, we, you, you were just, obviously we were talking about um, why is it important to, dis, you know, to discuss this subject. And as you say, it's, it's to obviously come to know ourselves better um, and to, to improve ourselves if we can understand the nature of our our mind, and I think definitely that there's so many emphasis, so many hadiths that emphasise um, that you know the, the the worship of the worship of um, someone who has knowledge is worth so much more than seventy ignorant worshippers, for example. Um, one hour's concentration, which says that the sleep. Wow. So yes, the, the, there's a great emphasis on, on knowledge, and yeah. understanding. Um, in fact, there's a narration that I, I know of where someone tells Imam Jafar al-Sadiq that we know of a person who worships a lot, and he's very, very careful with his worship. And, and the Imam says, "What is what is Akan like?" Yeah. And, and they say he doesn't have any. And the Imam says, "Then his deeds will not be raised up." So right. Uh, right. Yeah, there are, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on on understanding and knowledge. There's a narration by Imam Ali who says that avoid two types of people. One is the, the knowledgeable who doesn't practice, who's corrupt. Right. The scholar who's, who's corrupt. Right. And the other <coughs> is the, the worshipper who's a fool, who's ignorant. Mm, I mean, right. these, are, these are two dangerous yes. groups of people. Yeah. And in my opinion, the first is more dangerous than the, the yeah. second because yeah. they are the ones who lead people astray. Yeah, in very subtle, subtle, yes. like, clever yes. ways. Yes, yeah, clever ways. Um, yeah. on, on the same subject, there's a narration by Imam Ali that the, the stench of a corrupt scholar will make the people of hell uncomfortable. SubhanAllah. Because, you know, hell is not a good place to be in. No. But a corrupt scholar would have that stench oh that God. even the people in hell will not like it. So, I mean, but not to say that scholars, I know there are people out there who latch onto this and say scholars are bad, but there's a narration by Imam Ali which says that the best of people are the, are the good scholars yeah. and the worst of people are the bad scholars. Yeah. So the, 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 the status of a good scholar is very high. Yes, yes. I, I think that's also a prophetic narration as well where the Holy Prophet said, you know, the, uh -huh. the best are the scholars and the yes. worst are the scholars. Yes. Uh, as well, so we have to be very um, uh, careful if we are seeking knowledge not yes. to abuse it yeah. or yeah. <coughs> use it for you know other agendas or um, to serve our ego or anything um, and then looking at um, human nature, so we have the contemporary view and the Islamic view, so what what, what, how did you want to, or how are you thinking of defining these? The, I mean, to put it very simply, the view of the academics and the scholars in the Western world is that we're just made up of matter, yeah. and that's it. So we're made up of atoms, and these atoms have their protons, and neutrons, electrons, and that's all it is, the matter that you see around you. Mm. And this is the, the physicalist view. Now, all we are is physical matter, and that's it. And that's the... Uh, the 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 mo most popular view, but then you get the ones you, you get the the more traditional view, and that's the the dualist view. Yeah. We call it dualist because th th there are two parts to it. That us human beings are made up of two parts. One is the body, the matter itself, yeah. and then there's the soul. The yeah. soul is the, the the immaterial part. So that's the the Islamic view, as far as we're concerned. That's mm -hmm. what Islam teaches. And that's the view of, uh, that's, the, that's the more common sense view right. that people have. Okay. And research has shown that this is, this is the view that children have. And this is the view that, that's uh, seen in 
all the civilizations throughout history. That there's always been a group of people from each civilization who believes that the soul does exist along with the body. Yeah. So there is the, the, the body and with it is the soul. And this is what Islam teaches. Um, I mean, you said you put it simply because obviously this isn't... Um it, it, it's not as simple as this because we know in in, um, in 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 some ways um, modern uh, thinking, modern secular thinking, has moved beyond materialism in some ways and is kind of searching around for um, for an understanding of reality that goes beyond just matter mm -hmm. uh, or just the material. Mm -hmm. Without, I, th I think the latest thing is like, how can you, um, you know, believe in, ha you know, have uh, or acknowledge a spiritual dimension without being religious, you know, without having believe in, mm -hmm. in any God? With books have come out where, you know, you know, what's it, religion for atheists or something, or so how you can. But they're still materialists. Yeah. They're still they still believe in matter being. Um, the only thing, the only substance yeah, that yeah. exists. I mean, Dawkins, Richard Dawkins, the, the world's most famous yeah. atheist, when he was asked, are you spiritual? And he said, yes, I am. And he doesn't believe in, in a soul. He says, I'm spiritual. He says, I, I like art. I like music. And, yeah. and so spir spirituality to them is just the emotions that you feel. Yeah. Whereas we need to recognize, and I think us Muslims need to recognize, there's a difference between feeling emotional and feeling spiritual. Yeah. And in, in that there's a danger as well, when, when you're doing something and you think it makes you feel spiritual. You may be listening to music, for example, yeah. and your religion says, this is haram. <coughs> and you say, well, it brings me closer towards God. Yeah. I, I, I came across someone who listens to the worst kind of music and he oh. says, this makes me feel spiritual. Right. But it's not spiritual, it's emotional. Right. It's not, it, you, you, your soul is becoming corrupt, but you're, you're feeling some emotions at that time. So we do have these new age spiritualists, you do have atheists who call themselves spiritual, but they're not really that spiritual. It's more a case of feeling emotions. Maybe there is an element of spirituality there. Maybe when they walk outside and, and see nature and see the signs of God, and they think, this is amazing, yeah. maybe there is that element of spirituality there that drives them towards studying whatever they see to a greater extent and finding out more about nature, and perhaps that would lead them towards God. So we do have people who do look for this spiritual dimension, yeah, yeah. but it seems like they're not going down the right track. Mm. Actually, also, just, just to add uh, another little um, complex sentence to that, I remember, re remember, remember reading uh, where Nietzsche says that spirituality is an aesthetic experience. So I think that in the, in the European world, um, I can't speak for the States because I, I, I don't live there and I'm not, you know, I can speak for Europe that um, in the European world, spirituality has been reduced to exactly as you say, Dawkins said, well, I enjoy art mm -hmm. and I enjoy, you know, painting and, yes. you know, and, and, and that's become the sort of definition of being spiritual or spirituality. It's, it's, the, it's the enjoyment of beauty, we could say. Yes, it is. And it takes a person who's felt true spirituality to know that that's not what we're looking for. Yeah. There's a, an, a saying, or I should say a verse in Sahih Sajjadiyah, Imam Sajjad says, <coughs> Oh my Lord, who could have felt the sweetness of your love and wanted any other in place of right. thee? So he's saying, who could have felt it and then wanted anything else in yeah. place? Yeah. It takes a spiritual person to um, to know the difference. Yes. And unfortunately, we sometimes forget our spiritual experiences. There's a narration by Imam Ali that the, the calamity of knowledge is forgetting it. Okay. So it's, it's, I would say it's not just book knowledge. You forget book knowledge, the, the, the academic yeah, yeah. knowledge. But you also have the knowledge of uh, spirituality or the life lessons, the lessons you learn in life. Yeah. You may have felt spiritual some time back and you yeah. may have people who felt spiritual and they've been good people. Then they start losing it. Yeah. Then they start committing sins. Yeah. And then they forget what it was like to be spiritual, yeah. to be closer to God. And then they ask themselves, what's the point of being religious? Because yeah. they've forgotten what it felt like before. Yeah. And if it came back to them, 
and they realize actually this is something good. Yeah. And I think maybe people need to go through that kind of experience more than once. You know, they, they need to feel it and then be taken away and then felt again. And then they begin, begin to appreciate it. Yeah. <coughs> I think that's true. And also, <coughs> the, the, the issue of, um, sorry to be really difficult, but the issue of dualism as well. I mean, yes, Islam does say, Islam does say there is a soul that, you know, Allah created the body, um, the, the embryo that became the human being, and the spirit was blown into it. So definitely there are these components to the human being. Um, some thinkers in the Muslim tradition have said, I mean, we, we had we had Plato who was saying that the body is material, it's matter, it's like a cage for the soul, the spirit, and the spirit just longs to be free and to return back to the one, to the one, uh, to God. Um, and that, that has kind of influenced, or it's kind of dovetailed with a lot of Islamic thought as well. But then we have other thinkers who have said that, um, in fact, the body and the soul are, are just one reality, but the body is just the external manifestation, mm -hmm. and the soul is just the internal component. You want me to comment on that? Um, yeah. I would say we should at least establish that there's a soul, right. and that there's something which is greater or more than the physical. Yeah. To go into the details, you know, what is the nature of the soul? How does it exactly interact with the mind? Those are the details. Yeah. We need to establish that there is a soul. And Islam does teach that there is the body and the soul. And, and narrations do state that when Allah created Prophet Adam, He created him and then blew the spirit yeah. into him. So there is that soul, and, and the narrations even state that the soul does come out of the body. Right, yeah. There's a famous narration of um, Salman al-Farsi who, who was talking to someone in the grave and asked him what happened, and the man says, my soul came out of my nose. Right. And that's, that's a narration. So, although there are these differences, the fact is we do believe that there's a body and a soul. Yeah. And so it, it does seem that Islam is a dualistic religion in this regard. Yeah rather than believing in one entity, it does believe in the two separate entities. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's a lot that... Uh, <coughs> I that. think that's a good point that, <coughs> as you said, that um, one needs to establish the fact that there is a soul. Um, first, first of all, especially as, as people are saying that there, there, isn't, there isn't such a thing. Or what is it? I mean, even we have, you know, Muslims are saying, well, what is the soul? And there hasn't been um, many sort of clear, um, clear definitions in the Muslim tradition. Uh, and I think, um, well, I suppose, I don't know whether that's a matter of language, um, whether it's a matter of um, the, the, the fact that uh, in some ways Arabic leaves, leaves something a little bit open. How can you know what yourself is, if it's the most immediate thing to yourself. Mm. If, if you, you know, if you're, you can see other things, but when you ask, what is the soul? Well, you know about the soul more than anything else that you know about. So perhaps why that question may be raised, these questions that you're asking, is because we know it so well Mm. That's why we don't know what it is. Right. It's just us. Yeah. We are the soul. Yeah. As René Descartes, the famous French um, philosopher, he, he, as he said, uh, the, the phrase, the famous saying, I think, therefore I am. Yeah. He was doubting the existence of many things. He, he, he was a doubter, what they call Cartesian doubt, when you begin to, when you doubt everything. Yeah. And he said, I wanted to build up my knowledge from the foundations. So he asks himself, does this exist? Does that exist? Do these people exist? Does God exist? Do I exist? Then he says, well, that question, do I exist? Can I ask myself that question if I didn't exist? Yeah, yeah. I'm doubting 
therefore I do exist, I think, therefore I am. And to him, the existence of the self, the soul, is more <coughs> apparent than the existence of anything else. Yeah. So when you ask, what is the soul? Well, the soul is me. You know, what else can you say yeah. except for that? Yeah. You know, that, that, that could be why these questions are asked, because it's so immediate. It's like fish swimming in water and saying, what is water? Because they've not seen anything else. Could, true. Could something along those lines. Yeah, that's true, yeah. If they've, if they've always, if they've always mm -hmm. swam in water, yes. then to have an objective conception yes. of what is water. Because it's, it's yeah. very much immediate to themselves. Yeah. And then um, there, the, you have some um, definition here or, or uh, explanation of the existence of the soul according to Islam. I have um, um, some <coughs> narrations and there are verses of the Quran which speak about the soul. And I, I just put these down because I wanted to establish that this is what Islam does believe in. Let, let's take, for example, Sheikh Sadduq in his um, book of Aqidah, uh, of the, the Shia. And he says, it is our belief that the nafs, the self, about the nafs, that it is the, the ruh, the soul, the spirit, mm. which is the cause of life. So he says that, in our opinion, the soul is the, the cause of life. Right. And he, he continues that the spirits are the first creations. Then he quotes the Prophet of Islam. The first thing which Allah created out of nothing were the blessed and pure souls. And Allah made them declare his oneness. And after that he brought into being other creatures. So his belief is that the souls were created first. And yeah. when, we, when he says blessed, it probably means that he's talking about the Ahlul Bayt. We have narration. Oh yes, because it says um, Allah created out of, the, the first thing that Allah created out of nothing were the blessed and pure souls. Yes, yeah. so it's probably the, the soul of Prophet Muhammad and, <coughs> and uh, the Ahlul Bayt. And, and then the other souls were created. Um, so he, he quotes another narration from the Prophet. He says, the souls are like a collection of armed forces. Whichever souls knew each other in that world, they are attracted towards each other in this world. And whichever remained apart from each other are repulsed from each other in this world. So th the opinion of Sheikh Sadduq, in, uh, as far as this um, narration is concerned, is that the souls knew each other, yeah. the, the souls being human souls, in a prior world. We don't know where and how, but they knew each other. And the ones who, who knew each other and had some affinity for each other have that same sort of affinity mm -hmm. in this world. Mm -hmm. And the ones who disliked each other dislike each other in this world. And in fact, I was reading a scholar, um, Sayyid Sayyid Dr. Rizvi, talking about this. And he says, that's why when you meet some people, you feel like, you know, you, you like them, you, you, you get along with them instantly. Yeah, yeah. And there are some people you just dislike. Now, that's his opinion. I, I, I think it's also not just a matter of like and dislike. I think um, also there are people that you feel you've known them for always. Mm -hmm. You can meet them very briefly. And, uh, and, and it is as if you've, you've always known each other. Whereas you can have you know, work colleagues or family members who you've known all your life, and they're total strangers to mm -hmm. you. you know, that, uh, I wonder if, uh, if, if you know them your whole life, you get to know them better. I mean, if, if the, the argument is that you knew them then, that means you know them better now. So you, you, you become more familiar with them, even through this life as well. Yeah, the, yeah, that's, yes. But still there's that, there's that um, affinity between souls. So people would feel, yes. when there's a, that affinity yeah. between souls, people often feel... I've known you before, you know, yes. or we've known and each other if, if, if this understanding is correct, the understanding that we're talking about, then it will be an explanation, it could be an explanation for what we experience sometimes. Yeah. You know, if, if, if the understanding of Sheikh Sadduq and the other scholars who have this understanding is correct, then it would be an explanation for what we experience. And I, so, I just, I just want to quickly cl clarify something for any viewers who are not imami, we could say, where you said that um, 
Sheikh Sadok says that the ruh is the cause of life. Obviously, Allah is the cause of life, but mm -hmm. the ruh is that the animating life, you know, the animating life force. We could, we could yes. say. Yes, that, that's uh, the understanding. Yeah. Um, in fact, today I was doing a bit of research. Only today, there's a psychologist. I forget his name. I, I, I am. Um, he, he, he does research into primates. Right. And the differences between primates and human beings. And he said that he thinks that perhaps human beings are the only creature that have a theory of mind. Right. A theory of mind means when human beings look at other human beings, they say that this being has a mind and other, other uh, creatures don't. Have okay. That. That's interesting. Maybe, maybe this is in line with what Islam teaches that human beings have what Allah uh, describes as His soul. When I say His, I mean the creation. Yeah. Allah, Allah, the, the, the narrations say that um, when uh, uh, the Quran talks about Allah breathing the soul, His soul, yeah. into Prophet Adam, His soul, yeah. His soul doesn't mean Allah's self. Yeah. It means Allah created a soul and then Allah attributes that soul to Himself. Right. To... to um, just as it says, to, they to say, elevate that soul, to say that this soul is something which is really worthy. Right. This, this is a great soul. Right. In the same way that Allah attributes <coughs> the, the Kaaba to Himself, yeah. to say that this is my house. It doesn't mean Allah lives in the house. It means from all the houses, this is the one which is the greatest. Yeah. So the narrations say that when Allah says in the Quran that He breathes into when uh, into Prophet Adam the soul, there's one narration which in fact says that an angel does the the, the inserting right. of the soul into Prophet Adam. But his soul means the creation of Allah. And, and Allah attributes it to himself because he wants to elevate it and say, this is a great mm -hmm. soul, this is a great spirit. And maybe this is an indication of what the psychologists were saying, that human beings have this understanding of the mind that yeah. other creatures don't. Yeah. And he's done, he's done some experiments to, to, to try and work out if that's the case or not. Okay. Um, and then um, he, he says here, um, um, it, is, it is our belief about the souls that they are not created from the genus of the body, i.e. they are not made of matter. They are another creation. As Allah has said in chapter 23, 14, then we made the cedar clot, then we made the clot a lump of flesh, then we made, it in, we made in the lump of flesh bones, then we clothe the bones in with flesh. Then we caused it to grow into another creation. So blessed, blessed be Allah, the best of uh, create, create, uh, creators. So he seems to be saying here that the, the soul is another creation. Is that, that what he's saying? So he, he's saying that these verses in um, Surah Mu'minun, which describe the stages in the embryo, he's saying that when Allah says, so we made it into another creation, it means that's when it goes from physical from being a physical entity into something that has a soul inserted into it. Right, right, right. So it's right. that stage at four months, because this uh -huh. is what Islam teaches, that it, was, it is at four months when um, the soul enters the body. Right, right. This is what the Prophet of Islam said. So uh, according to Sheikh Saduk, this is, what hap this is what's being described in this verse. Right. Uh, there comes a point when it's no <coughs> longer a certain type of creation, meaning physical, it becomes now a physical being with a soul inserted right, into it. Right, okay, okay, thank you. Um, and we've just got a couple of minutes till, till we go to the break, so we've just got um, a brief time to, um, to embark on the, the issue of the realm of Alast, or this realm where the souls existed. Um, I mean, we've given, you've given some uh, narrations that again are talking about this this realm, an un undefinable or undefined realm where the souls existed before they came here. And, and again, the realm of Alast, um, as they call it, uh, where the souls testify to the one of Allah, also seems to be this, this, this realm. Yes, the, the, there's a, a, a verse in Surah A'raf, verse um, 172, which talks about this covenant that was made. Now, the scholars say it's a, it's a difficult verse to interpret, and there are different meanings. Right. But it seems like the most popular meaning is that there was a time 
when we made a covenant. Yeah. We were in a different form. We weren't in the physical form that we are. And the verse goes like this, and when your Lord... We, we actually, we, we're, going to break, we're going to break there and come back after the break, inshallah, to, to, to read this verse. Sorry to, to, to cut you there. Inshallah, we will we'll look at that verse and discuss it in greater detail. You're watching Ahlul Bayt live on Ahlul Bayt TV. Inshallah, we'll see you again after the break. Asalaamu Alaikum.